Hello, and what is up all you mentally unstable raccoons, and it is time for my 20k Q&A. It has been a hot minute since I've done a Q&A. Last one was at 5,000 subscribers, and the one before that was 2,000, so this will be my third Q&A. Unfortunately, I don't have a face cam for you this time, because last time I used my phone, and, well... I kind of want to step up the quality a little bit. So before we get into all these questions, I initially wasn't planning on thanking you all for 20k because I always feel like YouTuber thank yous are very insincere, but according to TX240, he doesn't think that a thank you is disingenuous. And it's certainly nothing like the annoying begging for subs before the video even begins that many channels do. You mean, like, pointing out that 56.8% of the viewers of my channel are not subscribed? Damn, that's crazy. You should hit the subscribe button and hit the bell and the like icon. Anyway, now that my shameless plug is out of the way, it's time to dive into the questions that you all sent in. The first question is... I can already tell what type of video this is gonna be. Tell me, Pesky, why you simp? I don't know. Why you simp? Are you and Amber dating? There, I said it. For those of you who don't know, Amber has been a, uh, recurring character, shall we say, in a couple of my more recent videos, and the answer to that is yes, Amber and I are dating. Uh, it's been, well, I mean, depending on how you want to look at it, it's either been one month or two months. I don't really know which date to say officially. We started talking in January, and then long story short, we ended up meeting in person, and uh, as of right now, the relationship is smooth sailing, so pretty cool. Kristen Sanders wants to know what color my hair is, and off the top responds, a very hot blonde, and I mean, well... You said it, not me. How cringe will the video be? That is not a question that I can answer because as of recording this, I have not watched this video yet because this video doesn't exist yet. What's your credit card information? That is an excellent question and I will DM you my credit card information via your preferred social media platform. What is your birthday, bro? Please kill me. I was born June 9th, 2002, so Please, guys, remember my birthday because I don't want to have to say, haha, it's my birthday because then I feel bad. But I also want validation by you knowing it's my birthday. So when it comes June 9th, please remember. Also, if you look close enough at my birth date, you'll realize why I'm so good at comedy. Godzilla or Kong? Okay, this answer might sound like a bit of a cop out, but I like both Godzilla and King Kong equally. I think they're both really cool. Like, I love King Kong 2005, and Godzilla is just badass overall, but if I had to pick who I'm gonna root for in the movie, I'm gonna have to pick Kong. And that's because the movie is written, at least as far as we know, so that Kong acts as the good guy and Godzilla acts as the bad guy. So I feel that it will have more of an emotional impact if I root for the character that the plot says is the good guy, if that makes sense. Like, I feel like it would just enrich the experience to be rooting for Kong to defeat Godzilla and save the world. How did you meet Javert? Now, for those of you who don't know, Javert is another recurring character on my channel, and uh, me and him, we've been like good friends for god, I want to say since 2016. Now, if I've got to be completely honest, I don't actually remember when we met. I know we met through the aisle, and whenever we would play the aisle, we would just constantly DM each other through Steam until eventually January of 2017 comes around, and he messages me out of the blue after not talking for a span of like, I don't know, a couple months maybe? And he says, yo, let's play on a realism server. This is back when aisle realism was like, really good, like it was fresh, brand new, and it was very interesting. And I'm like, sure, let's do it. And he's like, do you want a VC? And I was like, uh, VC? That's kind of scary. So eventually we VC'd, and I think it was the Isle of Winter Realism public discord. Like, they had, like, little channels and everything where you could go for, like, your certain dinosaur species. And we played Acros on Isle of Winter Realism. That Isle of Winter, by the way, it was, like, a very old Isle server. It's long gone now. But that was, like, one of the big servers back in the day. So, yeah, the first times we VC'd, it was very awkward, not gonna lie. I, my little, what, 13, 14-year-old ass thought Z was, like, 
17 or 18 or something, but then apparently Z also thought I was 17 or 18. And then eventually we learned, oh, we're literally the same age. That's kind of how it happened, and then ever since we've just been good friends, you know, the boys. I don't really know how to respond to this, nor do I think I can answer it on YouTube, so I'm just going to take the fifth. How do you use a mouse pad and not a mouse? Like, seriously, how? When I got my first laptop, well, it's a laptop, and my 13, 14 year old ass didn't have a mouse. So I kind of just had to get used to playing games with a trackpad, specifically like the Isle and Primal Carnage. So eventually I found a control layout that was comfortable for me. I customized my controls accordingly so I could use the trackpad. And well, long story short, I got accustomed to using a trackpad instead of a mouse and it just works for me. June has a couple questions for me. First one is, has your life changed a lot since becoming popular on YouTube? Honestly, not really, at least not personal life. Like, yeah, it, it's fun to brag about the channel to close friends and joke about it and stuff. I, I know, very humble of me. But as far as like other things in the personal life, nothing's really changed that much. The only aspect of my life that's really changed from YouTube is the online perspective of it. As for what it's like being recognized when I play games, it, it depends on how someone goes about it. I used to be like, really like, wow, that's crazy. But then it's kind of devolved to a point where people are just asking real pesky. And then it's just kind of like, oh, come on, bro. But then again, I don't mind it because that's just kind of something that comes with doing YouTube. Like you gotta expect people to ask real pesky, fake pesky, that type of stuff. Although I don't know why people still assume that YouTubers are fakes. I feel like nobody really puts an effort to be a fake anymore. Although on the same note, I do really appreciate when people say real pesky, fake pesky, because then sometimes I get to screw with them and chat a little bit, and then it's funny. Like the other night I was in Path of Titans and someone was like, OMG, is that the real pesky? So then I said, yes, I am real, please subscribe, please, or something like that. And then they all thought I was fake because I said I was real. So it was really fun playing mind games like that. And of course it's all in good humor, but as you know, I'm all about getting the funny content. And finally, do you feel like you're letting people down when you haven't uploaded in a while? Ah, uh, yes, I do feel that way a lot actually. Like I want to upload at least two videos a week, but between college stuff and just not knowing what to record, it's just kind of difficult at times, and it's annoying in this dinosaur genre because there aren't many options as far as games go, and like with my Isle content, I want it to be like as high quality as possible, and not just the same thing repeated over and over and over. Like I want to add some form of uniqueness to it. On the same note, Isle also can get stale pretty quickly, so I try my best to space out Isle content to keep it interesting and then fill it in with like Path of Titans or Primal Carnage or what have you. But these last few months on YouTube have made me realize that the aisle can only carry me so far and I have to be looking for that next step into like evolving my channel, so to speak. I just want to find that right balance between quality and quantity because I've been trying to make my quality go up recently, but it's been kind of at the sacrifice of quantity because I'm putting a lot more thought into my videos than I used to instead of just, okay, aisle video, aisle video, aisle video, like I used to. And I think this is a necessary step. And for those of you who are sticking around for this weird process that's been going on, like less content, but more effort, I very much appreciate it. So you're real ones. Favorite DreamWorks villain, go. Uh, definitely Alec Baldwin Lion from Madagascar 2. You are a gamer. True. Will you ever make merch? You know, I would absolutely love to, because I think pesky plushies would sell out like wildfire. Does that analogy make sense? I don't know, but it sounded cool. Yeah, I have thought about merch. I think plushies would be neat. Uh, sweatshirts, and uh, if the COVID stuff is still going on, which it looks like it will be going on for a while because all the giant corporations love the pandemic because it gives them more power. Pesky masks would be cool. So I do want merch to eventually happen. I don't know when that would be. A, like a year ago, I was like, yeah, I'll do it at 30,000 subscribers. But now that I'm at 20,000, 
I'm kind of like, hmm, I still feel like that's a bit too early. Maybe 50,000 subscribers if I ever hit that, or maybe 100,000, I don't know. Just, if you want the merch, make sure to like and subscribe, because every subscriber that subscribes is just one step closer to getting that merch. So, I don't know when it will be, but hopefully, eventually. Why don't you play the aisle as much? I feel like this question kind of goes back to the last answer. Well, not the last answer, but the one a couple answers before this, you know what I mean? About, I don't want to milk the game dry, and I want to keep the quality, like, up without it getting stale, if that makes sense. And it's also just trying to not be as reliant on the aisle. Because realistically, we don't know how much time the aisle has left. It's obvious the kind of tactic they're doing, it's update slowly and show a couple things here and there to keep people interested and just make the game have as much longevity as possible, which, I mean, I think is kind of scummy. And people will say, oh, they're not doing that, they're just taking their time. And it's like, yeah, you've probably only been here for a year or two. I've been following this game for five years. I know how this works. Go on the aisle discord and say Anki is a good animal. Well, you see, last time I did that, it started World War III. What's the funniest thing that's ever happened to you? Uh, I don't know if it's the funniest, but it's certainly funny. Back in 2013, my family and I went to Lancaster, Pennsylvania for spring break. Don't ask me why. We just went to Lancaster, Pennsylvania. What's so interesting about it, I don't really know, but we did it. And towards the end of the trip, I ran out of socks, because for whatever reason I didn't pack enough socks, and I don't remember why, but apparently this was a big issue to my mom. So, me and my two sisters and my mom and my dad were driving around looking for a place that sells socks, and we just cannot find a place that sells socks. And I'm pretty sure my mom was pissed off at this point over socks, which I think is kind of funny. So yeah, we're looking for socks in, in plaza after plaza, and eventually we're like, okay, there's no socks here. And then my sister looks behind her and she's like, mom, look! And what do you know, there's a store called Socks Galore, like, right behind us. That we somehow, none of us saw it until that very moment. Like, I shit you not, this store was literally called Socks Galore. So, yeah, that was pretty hilarious. Mamoon asks Ben Shapiro, and to that I say, yeah, Ben Shapiro. Do you still think Anki is a bad animal? I never did. Do I have your permission to make a pesky shrine? Absolutely. Any unhealthy idolizing of YouTubers is okay in my book, so long as you're idolizing me. Waffles or pancakes, your answer to this question may or may not forever change my perception of you. Well, I hope it changes it in a positive way, because pancakes all the way, obviously. Do you think you would be as big as you are now if you hadn't made that Anki video? And are you still happy with that video? No, I don't think I'd be as big as I am now because that really kind of set in stone who I was as a content creator. Plus, I gained 3,000 subscribers in one day from the aftermath of that video, which is when, you know, Dondi and the developer that we don't speak of called me out. As for whether or not I'm still happy with that video, I'd say I am. Like, I go back and look at it, and I think there's some things I could have done better. Like, as far as explaining why Anki could be good in the game, I think I did a good job, but, um... Well, for one thing, I'm embarrassed to have made a rant sona, but to be fair, I didn't know what a rant sona was before I made that video, so I give myself an excuse. Also, to be fair, it was a shitty Photoshop Dinosaur King reference, so I think it gets a pass. I definitely shouldn't have used Brian's name so carefreely, because that was just kind of not insensitive, but ignorant of me to assume that the internet and the aisle community would be kind to him. But other than that, no, I don't regret the video at all. In the current state of dinosaur survival games, or just dinosaur games in general, uh, which are the ones you're most excited for? I'm definitely most excited for Prehistoric Kingdom, because that game has been in the works for years at this point, since I was in middle school. And to see all the progress they've made since the pre-alpha demo to now with their new trailer, it's very awesome to see, and you can bet your ass that I'm going to play Prehistoric Kingdom on the channel. This is an epic Fortnite Peter Griffin moment, guys. I want to ask Pesky if he like Monkey Man isn't that poggers, guys. Why do your videos make me laugh? Probably because you have a poor sense of humor. And what made you want to start YouTube? Um, I don't know. I just kind of 
wanted to do it. I know, crazy answer. I don't know, I watched Gaming Beaver a lot throughout, you know, middle school and high school and all that, and I was like, you know what would be cool? If I could do that. I, I guess you could say that his channel is kind of what got the idea of YouTube in my head. But then one day I was just like, you know what would be crazy? If I recorded no commentary aisle gameplay and uploaded it. And lo and behold, now we're here. Has your opinion changed on Beast of Bermuda since the first video? Uh, if by that you mean my opinion that the game sucks, no, it does not change very much. I wish Beasts of Bermuda would go for a more casual approach, because that's what's mainly stopping me from playing it. The fact that it takes so long to grow things, and I think the growth timers could heavily benefit from being reduced down to like, three hours, four hours, maximum. I think if it really wants to do well, Beasts of Bermuda needs to focus on a more casual market. Because the Isle is the one that wants to go for like, more hardcore. And the thing is, the Isle works as a hardcore game because there's no BS like, growing to a kaiju-sized raptor. like there is in Beast of Bermuda. But if you're gonna allow players to grow that large, that just creates an elitist atmosphere in the game, and it's just not healthy for the game itself. So if Beast of Bermuda went for a much more casual gameplay style, I'd definitely play it, because you know, you can just pick it up, play for fun, grow a dinosaur in like one to two hours, you know, have some fun, get some upgrades, and fight people. But unfortunately, Beast of Bermuda has this idea, I feel like, where it wants to be hardcore, and that's really just not what it's cut out for. And I wish the developers would realize that. Do you think you're ever going to expand your channel to other games or just stick to dinosaur ones? Um, like I said before, I do want to expand to other types of games, but I also want to keep dinosaurs the main focus, because... I love dinosaurs, man. They're great. What was your least favorite class in school? How do you like your eggs? And what song has been stuck in your head recently? My least favorite class was math. I like my eggs scrambled. And a song that's been stuck in my head is the Dragon Ball Fighter Z Super Broly theme. Did you ever have problems making your OC? And did you ever think your OC would be something else? Okay, I want to clarify. My quote, Blue Carno, it's not really an OC, like it doesn't have any lore to it or anything, like he doesn't have a backstory or anything, he's just kind of the mascot. The brand icon, if you will. But no, I never really thought it would be anything else. I was always kind of set on Carno if I ever had a YouTube channel. Do you ever see yourself growing out of making content on YouTube? Eventually, yes. I'm not saying, like, soon, but eventually, maybe five years in the future, ten years in the future, who knows? Eventually, I'll reach that point where I'll say, yeah, I'm satisfied with this, and that will be the end of Pesky, because every story kind of has to have an end. So the realistic answer is yes, this will eventually end, because all things come to an end eventually. But I don't plan on ending it anytime soon, because I genuinely love doing this. Sorry to bring politics into funny dinosaur game, but what are your thoughts on the current president of the US and what he's done so far? Well, when your president keeps zero of the promises that he made on the campaign trail, as well as bombs Syria for no apparent reason, I think it's pretty safe to say that he is clearly a great president, and honestly, in my opinion, He's better than Abraham Lincoln. He's better than George Washington. He's great. A hundred percent. Love him. How long have you been playing Primal Carnage to get so good at it? I've been playing since, I believe, February of 2016. So, yeah, it comes with time. Also, word of advice to all of you, don't worry about performing well or not. Just play casually. Have fun when you play that game. If you feed into the competitive atmosphere, it's just very toxic. Like, the more you play that game, the more you'll notice that it's the same 10 people on the game over and over and over and over, and it gets really unironically nauseating. What do your family and friends think about your YouTube channel? They have been very supportive of it, and I'm proud to say that because my family and friends are awesome. A big shout out to any of you who may be watching this. Do you have depression and anxiety like most of us here? Well, severely hot take. I am going to go joker mode for a minute and say you're not depressed, you're just feeling the side effects of our shit society. And this is just me speaking, so don't take any of this as fact. I feel like 
the reason that a lot of people are depressed or anxious nowadays is because of our culture and because of things like the internet. Like, you're constantly bombarded with people succeeding and people doing better than you and people looking better than you. And, I mean, granted, if you want to think about it this way, I kind of contribute to that because, like, I have a YouTube channel, you know? Like, albeit it's a small one, but the point still stands that people kind of put that on a pedestal. Like, oh, I have a YouTube channel, so that means I am more successful than you. And it's like, that's not healthy? Because at the end of the day, 50% of YouTube is luck. Like, you'll see channels, channels in the dinosaur genre who have a lot of subscribers and they don't deserve to be where they are. Frankly, I don't think I deserve to have had as much good luck with YouTube as I do. But it's the way it happens, so I'm going to make use of that. There's a lot of things that contribute to shitty mental states. And if you feel like you're depressed, I urge you to just summon all your willpower and kind of be honest with yourself and address what am I upset about, what's my main thing that I want, and then think about how you could achieve that. I'd recommend to you that the first step should be to take a step away from the internet take a step away from YouTube. That includes my channel, because at the end of the day, my channel is just entertainment. Your well-being is more important than watching YouTube all day. Go outside, do something that you've always wanted to do, and I know that's kind of hard with quarantine right now, but just even just going outside and going for a walk and just reflecting on things and feeling the fresh air, it's very therapeutic. Maybe try and talk to a friend that you miss that you haven't talked to in a while. I don't know. Bottom line is help yourself because you can't help others until you help yourself. What's your favorite Pokemon? Favorite Pokemon? Definitely Sandile. I love him. Don't judge me. It's a weird question to ask. Don't worry. We take all kinds of weird questions here. But when was the last time you had diary... Uh... Next question. Will you ever try to get a sweet, sweet beaver collab? Oh, God, I would love that so damn much. I actually mentioned this in one of my Path of Titans videos recently. I want to reach out to him and ask like, hey, haha, collab, maybe, question mark? But then it's like, that's so obviously clout chasing. So I feel like I should have a little more legitimacy as a content creator before I even do that, but I don't know. Or, or maybe I should just go for it soon, to be honest. I don't know. We'll see. With 20k of us now, do you think we could crowdsource your homework so you can make more videos? Um, don't worry, that won't be necessary, although it would be nice, because honestly, a lot of my college work is pretty easy. Or can you have a Patreon link or something? Jesus fucking Christ, man, let us pay you back, OMG. <laughs> Jeez, I appreciate it, I really do. Patreon, I'm like, split between, because on the one hand, you don't have to pay it. Like, Patreon's completely optional. But then, there's the other hand where I'm like, it's still scummy to ask my subscribers for money. I don't know, l let me know in the comments what you think about that, because I'm not even sure what I think. What is your least favorite dinosaur out of all dinosaurs? Um, I don't really have a most hated dinosaur, because they're all just animals. Like, there's none that I really dislike. Sorry if that's a cop-out answer. And what happened to that crab girl? Okay, I need to clarify this. I made a poll, like... A month or two or three I don't know some time ago and it was like hey so um there's this girl and um and then I put a bunch of stupid emojis as like options for a poll people thought that I was literally like asking for relationship advice and I was literally just bored and shit posting at 2 a.m. that one meme format where it's like hey so um there's this girl you know so the crab girl doesn't exist and I think that the fact that people thought it was a real person is just the funniest thing ever. How would you feel about fan-made animations of your funny blue carno? Dude, I am not opposed to that at all. Like, if you feel so inclined, go right ahead and make a fan animation. I would love that. That would be very nice. Again, you don't have to, only do it if you want to. Assuming you have a working time machine, what period of time would you most want to visit and why? Uh, I guess the basic answer is like... 
back in the time of dinosaurs, but if we're talking human history, then probably the 1920s. Will you do more art and play arc ever? Yes, I will do more of the drawing videos, absolutely. I love that series, and I know you guys love it too, judging on your profile pictures. And I will never play Ark. I will play Ark 2 when that comes out eventually, but I have zero, absolutely zero interest in playing the original Ark. I'm sorry to you Ark fans out there, but it just, number one, never interested me. Number two, it seems kind of dry for content. What's your favorite Kirby character? Smiley face. My favorite Kirby character is easily King DDD. I love that obese penguin. He is great. Also, this is my sister. Everyone go subscribe to her. What do you think of the Isle Legacy Branch's incoming removal? Uh, I say good riddance. I, I don't care if Legacy Isle is deleted at this point. All the good memories of Legacy Isle, they're already dead. Like, Region 2, Fenya, it will just live in my memory and in old YouTube videos from other channels. So I don't care if Legacy is deleted because in the state it's in right now, it's not fun. And in my opinion, it's better off gone. What's your most memorable moment on YouTube? Definitely the day that Dondi and the developer we don't speak of called me out over that whole Anki video misunderstanding. So I remember on that day I woke up, I had like a ton of pings on Discord, like, hey, the devs of the aisle called you out, and I was like, wait, what? Oh boy, here we go. And this was like two months after I actually made the Anki video. So this was all cumulating or culminating or whatever you want to call it. And it hit the point where Dondi and the dev we don't speak of called me out on stream, and I was like, oh boy, I gotta respond to this. So I rushed a video out, I formulated my response, I just kind of did it off the cuff, and... <laughs> As I'm recording and editing and exporting and uploading the video, my aunt's car ended up breaking down. Like it had broken down a couple days prior and my dad and I had to go pick up the car to like bring it back because you know, you obviously have to drive two cars because you have to go there and then drive back to get the car. So my dad is constantly screaming at me, Joe, come on, we gotta go. We gotta go get the car because the place closes at four or five or whatever, I don't know. And I'm like, okay, okay, I'm trying to get the video out. Just give me five more minutes. And at this point, my parents don't really know that much about my channel. Like, they know that I have a channel, but they don't know what it's called. They don't know anything about it, really. So eventually, while I was in the car with my dad driving to the uh, repair shop, I told my dad about the channel and everything and why I was taking so long because the devs had called me out and stuff like that. And it was just nice to finally tell my parents about my YouTube channel because I wasn't sure if they'd like think it was, you know, weird or cringe or whatever. So yeah, that day was very hectic. I was very out of it when we drove back. like after picking up the car. I, I, I remember driving and just being like, huh, today certainly is a day. And I'm constantly getting DMs on Discord from people saying, I'm sorry this is happening, I support you. I'm getting tagged in servers. It was absolutely mental. And I look at the video and the views are rolling in and I'm like, holy shit, what is going on? And it was just a very crazy experience. And I mean, I obviously came out on top in the end, which really made me like, holy shit, I'm a competent human being. Yeah, that's my most memorable experience doing YouTube. And it probably will be for a while, at least until something even bigger and crazier happens. What are your thoughts on the new Acro, Alberto, Anki, and Austro concepts that the devs have showed in Phase 2? The Acro's okay, the Alberto is ick. The Anki is good, like I love the Anki except for the dip in its back, that is actually horrible. And the Ostro is probably the worst thing I've ever seen in my life. At what point in the Owl's development did you think it was actually a great and fun dinosaur game? Definitely when mods were a thing, and also in like the Region 2 remake days, in the very early days of survival on Thenial. Are you happy with the direction that Everyma is heading? Hey, Kind of. Um, I wish Everyma would make its forests less dense because nobody goes in the forest because they're so dense. Also, Carnotaurus is a very big disappointment. The charge attack does not a lot of damage at all. Stego needs an actual tail swing instead of a jab. Tenanto is too good, Carno's too weak, and Utah is... Utah. I still feel like it's too early to tell with Evrima, 
but right now it's just not that good. <sighs> and finally, last question, what's one area you would like to see yourself improve in the next year? Uh, definitely editing skill. I kind of want to set a subscriber goal, but at the same time, 20k is such a weird number. This year has the potential for me to have like, you know, sort of linear constant growth or I could just blow up. Like, there's really no in between. I can't really predict it right now. I'm just gonna say shoot for 40,000 by the end of the year, but who knows if that will actually happen or not. We'll see. But yeah, I want to get better with editing. I want to get better with more technical stuff and just expand my content into other areas more, you know, kind of grow that pesky empire, if you will. So without further ado, this is the end of the video, everyone. Uh, I thank you for sticking around this long, if you have. Uh, make sure to like, subscribe, all that jazz. This recording is probably a lot longer than I wanted it to be, so I'm probably gonna have to cut it down quite a bit. But, you know, what are you gonna do? I love answering your questions, and I apologize if your question didn't get answered, but that's just kind of the name of the game. So, I will leave y'all to it. Until my next video, I will see y'all later.